Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. What was and Partygate? Stung back into action recently, I'd like to bring together two previous Minute EA uh, episodes to hopefully extend the thinking. In the River of Architecture episode, I talked about the potential need in not only having as-is and to-be states in architecture, but also a what-was. That was mostly to understand direction of travel and trajectory uh, and to learn from history. Following on from the Crowds and Parties episode, the UK government's party gate seems to some scandalous and to others trivial. And unless you look at the what was context as part of the what was architectural state of rules, policies and governance arrangements at the time, you cannot look at it objectively in the context at that time or indeed learn from it. So, of course, as architects, our job is not one to make the judgment, but we can provide and preserve that context. And what was is as critical here as as is or to be. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday. My thanks there to uh, Paul Herman of IBM for the latest in his EA Minutes. Yes, the uh, the Partygate saga, the thing that uh, that runs and runs. But it's a, a great reminder that uh, the context of uh, what was going on at the time is important in, a, in uh, all aspects of our world. So um, thank you for that, Paul. And welcome to each and every one of you, wherever you are in the world. I hope you are safe and well. Um, Great to have you with us. This is uh, a popular topic. We've had uh, a lot of registrations for this uh, event today, and uh, I'm glad you can all be with us. Um, please do let us know. You'll see some some uh, chats coming through on the chat channel, letting us know where you're joining us from. It's always something we like to do uh, at the Open Group and uh, and here at Talk Talk It Tuesday. So uh, always good. A very international audience, and we're delighted to have you with us today. So just a, a quick housekeeping item. Um, we use the uh, WebEx platform here, and uh, the way that we ask questions is through the Q&A channel. So many of you are using the chat channel right now to communicate with each other, which is great. Um, and uh, please continue to do that. But for the questions of our presenter today, if you have any, please use the Q&A channel, not the chat channel. And the way you'll find that if it's not uh, already on your screen is if you click on the three dots in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the option to click on Q&A, and in there you can ask a question of our presenter today. So um, we, we have a great, as I say, popular topic today, so uh, I'm going to go straight straight to it and um, give the most uh, the most time we have to to that topic. And it's, it's the topic of the TOGAF Standard 10th Edition, something that uh, I've spent a lot of time um, talking about and answering questions about in the last uh, month or so since we uh, launched it. And um, today we're going to get a real uh, a, a real short and uh, and sweet summary of what's new and different. And um, to do that, uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce my my colleague, Mark Dixon, who is the Architecture Forum Director here at the Open Group. So Mark joined the Open Group actually in uh, 2020 as the, as the Forum Director. He has got a career spanning 30 years and held senior EA roles in a number of organizations during that time. But today he's going to talk about um, our, our flagship standard, the TOGAF Standard 10th Edition, and what's new. Without further ado, a warm Welcome from the Open Group to Mark Dixon. 
Over to you, sir. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, the, as you might be able to tell, this is coming to you live with all of the mistakes edited in. Um, I'm going to do my best to deliver a presentation that currently takes me 30 minutes in 15. So you'll forgive me if I um, uh, skate over some of the slides. I decided to leave all the slides as is because they'll be available for download. So if you want to see them all, uh, you can do. Um, but I shall crack on. In, in today's session, really, I'm going to give you the main points uh, uh, of the you release the headlines for the, the uh, apply to the TOGAF standard 10th edition release. And um, I, I might give you a little bit of decorative comment here and there, but I'm also going to point you to where you can find out all of the detail. Uh, so stay tuned to the very last slide in my, I think, 10 slide deck. Uh, it will give you links to where you can go in, uh, and get all the detail on what has changed in the new release. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about what hasn't changed uh, and maybe address one or two of the um, uh, myths that, that seem to be already circulating. Uh, so the summary, the main points, three things to remember. If you prefer to sleep through the rest of this presentation, remember these three things. Uh, the main features uh, that characterize 10th uh, edition of the TOGAF standard and distinguish it from its predecessors are its modular structure. What does that mean? I'll come on to that in a moment. Modular structure, though, is important. And as, as uh, I, I'm, I expect that everyone who's joined us today is either an enterprise architect or wants to find out more about enterprise architecture, modular structure, um, quite important. It's now a feature of the product. Uh, the content is expanded. What does that mean? There's more content. Uh, and it's, there's also domain-specific material. Why are these two different things? It's breadth and depth, two dimensions. So I thought they were worth both uh, uh, highlighting. So um, TOGAF, the TOGAF standard now includes material uh, that addresses specific contexts as part of the standard. Uh, previously, we've published guides which show you how to apply the standard in specific contexts, including uh, domain-specific material in the standard has quite important um, implications uh, for those of you who uh, are keen to follow certification tracks. I'm going to add that I'm not going to talk a lot about certification today, hardly anything beyond what I'm just mentioning. Uh, news on certification is coming soon. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure you are all looking forward to that. But if you have questions, if you're warming up questions on that topic, I'm not in a position to answer them, but I'll do my best to, uh, uh, to reassure you. So I want to talk very, very briefly about how we make the TOGAV standard. It's very important that you understand that it's member driven and experience based and it's, uh, and there is a consensus approval process. Um, that means that you can be assured that anything that you're reading um, has actually, it represents things that actually work and, and have been demonstrated to have worked in the real world. Um, I, why do I mention that? Uh, it's good to know that you're standing on the shoulders of your peers. Uh, in the industry, and it's good to know that you're using material uh, that has been road tested properly and proven to be sound, uh, and not just in the opinion of the author, but in the opinion of the architecture forum. Uh, we take everything through a peer review process before it's published, uh, and and amendments uh, and clarifications uh, and changes can arise out of that process. I, I think it's worth mentioning that. Um, your reading material that is actually used by your peers in the industry. Um, briefly, what is the TOGAF standard for those who maybe are not quite sure? Um, I'm not going to go through every point on here because simply there isn't time. The main thing that I would draw your attention to is, uh, as many of you probably already know, uh, it's a methodology and a framework, but it is intended to be configurable. And it, it's now modular, so the ways that you can use it uh, have been made more flexible. Nobody expects you to use it all. Uh, unless you're training in it, nobody even expects you to read it all. If you're going to get certified in it, it's a good idea to have an understanding of what's in it and what its potential is. But the way that you use it, it's up to you. Uh, the, the, uh, the context in which you're operating is king. You have to use judgment in order to decide which parts of it to apply. 
But being a comprehensive framework, it tries to offer guidance uh, for most situations that enterprise architects find themselves in. Uh, so if you're wondering, is the TOGAF standard rooted in waterfall? No, it isn't. Has it gone agile? No, it hasn't. Can it do either of those things? Yes, it can. It's up to you. Um, so moving on. Let's start talking a little bit about what's uh, what's changed. And before I do that, I want to talk about some things that have not changed. It depends what you're reading. If you're following the commentary uh, in um, in in the marketplace, uh, most of it is very accurate and very fair. Most of it is saying exactly what uh, what has happened. Uh, some commentators have got the impression that. that that the, the TOGAF standard has undergone some kind of ref, uh, revolutionary transformation. If you're coming in from uh, TOGAF 9.2 or even earlier, there are many elements that you're still going to recognize. We um, still uh, follow the um, still we still talk about um, the architecture development method. Those things are very, you know, we're all still in there, all the things that you're familiar with. Um, catalogs, diagrams and matrices are at the heart of it. You can't really do enterprise architecture without making lists of things and cross-referencing them to other things and drawing pictures to communicate them. Uh, we still describe um, the process of breaking down a large complex problem into enterprise segment and capabilities as a good way of uh, simplifying complexity. The changes that we've made uh, are um, significantly around the way that the content has been structured. There's been sufficient, uh, significant revision to quite a lot of the content to make it clearer, not always to change its fundamental um, uh, character, uh, but for clarity uh, and ease of understanding. Uh, and we've expanded the content with the introduction of 20 new series guides. Uh, and again, uh, and I will come on to, in just a second to talk about those. Um, so that's why this slide is called something old, something new. It, the, it's an evolution from 9.2 and at the risk of treading uh, a well-worn cliche out once again. It's not a revolution to 10th edition, uh, but it is uh, a significant and impactful change. Um, the modular structure. Uh, some vocabulary here. It's always good to talk for architects to talk about vocabulary, isn't it? Um, we can we now talk about fundamental content and expanded content or series guides. The fundamental content is the stable and enduring core of the material. Uh, you'll recognize quite a lot of it from version 9.2. Uh, but if you look carefully, you will see that there are quite a lot of differences. One of the um, things that we've done in the course of restructuring it is to break it out into separate volumes. Um, the reason that we've done that is really we've observed that in the, we, we say that not, we don't expect everybody to use it all. Making it available in, uh, in uh, useful, discrete chunks is, uh, is a helpful uh, thing, we think. So uh, you can see that we've broken the, fun the fundamental content up into uh, six basic pieces. Uh, we have a new introduction and core concepts section. And if you're new to TOGAF or you want to get a, a good overview of the entire standard, that's the place to start, as you might expect. Uh, and then we've created volumes um, uh, for the architecture development method uh, and architecture content. So uh, what, what's our, if you're not familiar with with the architecture content uh, section of the of 9.2, that's where we talk about things like artifacts, um, the stuff that architects make and how to make them. And then we've got a separate section on uh, architecture capability and governance, which is helpful. Not hopefully everybody knows what governance means, but it's also an area that's helpful for um, uh, those people who want to build and run architecture teams. And then for series guides, we've got a whole raft of information uh, across a whole range of topics. Now, the keen eyed amongst you will have observed that there are not 20 bullet points on that screen underneath series guides. Um, that would make the text very, very small and would encourage me to read them all out, which would be quite dull. But what they are uh, are groupings and there are one or more series guides under each of those. And there will be more series guides in the future, extending those topic areas and um, adding 
adding to the collection of topic areas themselves. Now, don't get too hung up on what those groupings are and what they're called. I don't think they're going to be in the exam. They're just a convenient set of uh, folders for us to place things under. They're likely to change over time. As I said, we're, 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 we're certain to introduce new topic areas and we might move a few things about. But the main point today is to communicate to you that um, the, the breadth and depth of information that's available as a formal part of the standard um, has, in has, has increased. Uh, now, alongside that material, uh, we still offer and will continue to develop guides, white papers and tools um, in the strict sense of the way that we classify the material in and around TOGAF. We, t we say that they have, don't have a formal status. What does that mean? They're not going to come up on the exam. They're, they're extra um, supporting uh, pieces of information that we hope that you will find useful. Um, but as far as the formal parts of the uh, TOGAF standard are concerned, it's that stuff over there on the left hand side in those boxes labeled fundamental content and series guides. If you want to remember anything from this slide, remember fundamental content and series guides. Those words are going to come a lot, uh, come up a lot around the TOGAF community. Moving on. I'm just a bit of time. Not too bad. Um, so the expanded guidance. 20 series guides. Uh, I mentioned that we've got 20 already, and I've got another slide really that just repeats the topic areas. If I had more time, I would go into uh, more detail on what they are, but I do not today. So I'm going to move on. Uh, you will get um, a reference to a document you can download that tells you what all of those are, uh, all of the individual specific series guides are, uh, and how to download them if you want to read them. Uh, you'll get that in just a moment. Uh, in fact, you'll get it right now. I forgot what the next slide is. It's getting started. So if you want to get the full detail on everything that has changed in the 10th edition of the TOGAF standard, download this paper, uh, an introduction to the TOGAF standard 10th edition. Uh, it's actually a very easy read. I think it's about 20, 30 pages of narrative uh, and a big appendix. Uh, the appendix is there for those who really want to go into the nitty gritty of, you know, line by line of what's changed and what's new in the, in the standard. Uh, and this document will give you everything. Uh, it, the rest of the material, the front part of the document, is uh, actually quite an interesting narrative that describes the motivation for change as well as the substance of the change. Uh, and that's quite, even if, even to the most casual reader who, who's heard of the TOGAF standard, um, it's actually quite an easy and informative read. So I highly recommend it. Uh, and it's a great way of uh, starting the transition from 9.2 to 10th edition. Now, I should mention, I mentioned the transition word. Not sure if I've got a slide on that. Um, why do, what about, what do we do about transition? Well, the thing I want to tell you today in the time I've got is that the arrival of 10th edition doesn't signal the departure of 9.2. Uh, making decisions about uh, transitioning from one version of the standard to another uh, is something that you should consider carefully. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, so version 9.2 is going to persist for quite some time. It's going to be functionally stable, but there, as in we're not planning on adding any more content to it. That's all going to go into 10th edition uh, and subsequent editions going forward. Uh, but neither are there any plans to remove it from being available. So you can be confident that that material is going to be available um, for a very long time for you to reference. There are no plans or decisions on retiring that information. I hope that was fairly straightforward and clear. Um, there's a little bit more information. I've got a little bit of time left. Digital edition. I want to tell you a little bit about this. Um, uh, not everybody wants to read a paper book. Not everybody wants to read a PDF. Uh, some people want, uh, in fact, an increasing number of people, imagine that, want to uh, reference the material, uh, dip in and out of it uh, over the web. The way that we present that information has had a radical overhaul. Uh, it's much easier to use now, and it brings the fundamental content and all of the extended guidance, the series guides, into one place. Uh, also, critically, and I want you to remember this, uh, uh, after I finish talking, it has a feedback and bug reporting feature built in. So if you want to, uh, uh, if you if you spot something in the standard that you think is not quite right, uh, or, or heaven forbid, a typo, uh, you have a way of reporting it as you find it. Uh, and I 
I get to see them all. Um, so, uh, so, so when you read it, don't sit there going, well, this doesn't make sense. Send me a comment and we'll do something about it. Looking ahead, uh, what does, what's the, what the most profound uh, consequence of moving to a modular structure is that it allows us to um, entertain the possibility of releasing updates to the standard in parts. So we can now, and it sounds fairly obvious, but it's worth saying, uh, now that the standard is made available in smaller parts, we can update those parts without having to update the whole thing uh, and reissue uh, uh, um, uh, the whole standard in one go. Uh, and we can also, uh, and we will, continue to be releasing uh, new series guides that add to the extended content. Uh, so stay tuned for more concrete information on that. There are several going through development at the moment in the Architecture Forum, and we'll be, we will be releasing them as updates to the standard when they're ready, uh, rather than waiting for a major milestone to come out. Uh, we will, of course, continue to release supporting content, those things over on the right in that picture I showed you a few minutes ago, guides and white papers and stuff like that. I also want to go revisit a lot of the stuff that we publish under the topic of tools, uh, because I think a lot of that is, uh, is due for some rework. Um, and we are continuing to work on more innovative ways to ac access and adapt the standard, he said, falling into the trap of reading out the words on the slide. Uh, and that really is a hint. I haven't got anything concrete to tell you on that, but we are looking at some potentially very exciting ways to make the content more available, uh, make the content more easy to use and useful without having to um, publish it in a linear format like words. Um, I'm not going to tell you much more than that, but it's quite interesting. Uh, it appeals to my inner nerd. Um, I think I'm right on the money as far as time is concerned, because we wanted to leave plenty of time for questions and answers, uh, of which there may be many, uh, given that I skated across the top of this topic in record time. Uh, so back to Steve. Thank you, Mark. Great job. Um, re really great job. There's loads more depth there, obviously, and um, you know, encourage people to take a look at the uh, at the slides uh, when we make them available and and the recording of your um, of your talk. Um, so great job on going through that. Uh, there are some questions, obviously, and um, uh, some of them relate to certification, which you were. Uh, Clear that you're not going to go into too much detail about, but let me let me take the first question um, on that, and then I'll um, then I'll come to you. There was a, a question came in very early about uh, when will the uh, exam for TOGAF certification switch to TOGAF 10 from TOGAF 9.2? And the second part of the question uh, is the current TOGAF certification exam still using? TOGAF 9.2. So to answer the second question first, yes. If you go to take your TOGAF exam today, that is based on uh, version 9.2 of the standard. So if you're partway through or, or you're even about to get trained or you're thinking about getting, um, uh, getting trained or studying and then certified, you should go ahead with 9.2. Absolutely, don't don't hesitate about that. Um, the content is still uh, still relevant, and there will be a way to upgrade your certification from nine point two to ten when the uh, TOGAF ten certification program becomes available. We do not have a specific date for TOGAF ten tenth um, uh, edition certification. Uh, at this point, uh, but it will be in the coming months. So look out for. Uh, for more information on that uh, as we go forward. Um, so uh, a bit, bit of a tease, but, but, but partly is we, we really want to make sure this is right and, um, and uh, rather than just getting something out for the sake of it. Um, so it will be a very uh, good quality program and uh, really quite well done, structured um, to different aspects of of practitioners um so look out for that um a lot of work's gone into that and there's still uh, quite a bit to do but um we'll say more about that nearer the time so that takes care of uh, quite a few of the questions to the extent that we're able to um one specific mark i don't know if you're are you still there mark are you, i've lost your video but um i am still here yes ah, okay. i just i dropped the video for a moment okay fair, fair enough so a question um uh, about the interplay with the Archimate standard, 
But as as the TOGAF taxonomy uh, evolves to version 10, will there be some impact on Archimate, do you think? Um, I think it depends which direction you draw the arrow. I think one of the things that, it, that has been published uh, contemporary to 10th edition, but is not formally part of the standard, uh, is uh, there is a guide on using Archimate with the TOGAF standard that has been written with 10th edition in mind, although it was published slightly in advance. It's still, uh, you know, there's, the, 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 it, it works. Um, now, there is uh, an active discussion uh, in the forum uh, about how formally we should include the Archimate standard within the TOGAF standard. And there's a, there are good arguments for and there are good arguments against. Um, uh, and and the way that I could see that panning out is having a more um, exact, sp specific model around the meta models that we include with the TOGAF standard. Uh, the reason that that we we sound hesitant is that we're mindful of the fact that we're very keen to maintain um, the neutrality of the TOGAF standard res relative to modelling standards. So there have been discussions before before I was staff, I recall there being discussions about, well, should we recognize UML and do specific kind of UML style diagrams in the TOGAF standard? And really all the way down the line, we've said no, because we don't want to prescribe a specific modeling standard um, for use with TOGAF. However, uh, what I would say is that the level of thinking that's gone into the guide that I mentioned using Archimate with the TOGAF standard has identified uh, a number of really interesting things which I think could lead to an improvement in, or you know, improvement, that's harsh, isn't it? Developments in the meta models to make them more uh, specific, uh, if I could put it like that, in, in a good way. Does that make sense? Is that a good enough answer for now? I could probably talk for an hour on that topic on its own, to be honest. Yeah, let's not. But but it is a good. Uh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I I think that uh, that answers the question there, Mark. I don't know if you're able to come back on video. Um, sure. Because uh, the audience would like to see your your face as well while you're answering. There we go. Thank you. Um, so uh, another another question has come. There are there are more about um, about, about certification. Obviously, um, uh, uh, I can take one uh, about OAA certification, our Open Agile Architecture certification. Will that be kept separate from TOGAF ten certification? The answer to that is yes. Um, it will still be it will still be separate, um, and. Um, there's also a question which I think is maybe from somebody in our training ecosystem about uh, about um, when the conformance requirements for the Tag of Ten classes will be available. And again, we don't have a we don't have a specific date for that, but there is a, a beta program going on with our training community. So if you are part of that, um, then please. Um, Please get involved in that. If you if you are part of the community and you're you're a member, then you're able to get involved in that uh, beta program where we're getting feedback and uh, and improving uh, the program before launch. So um, one last question for you, Mark. Um, and uh, I'm gonna it, it's quite a long question, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shorten it. It's basically um, at first at first review, um, a lot of the content in the 10th edition um uh it appears evolutionary in nature uh but the core standard is largely intact so are there any specific major changes that people should focus on and this is somebody who's certified in version 9.1 actually and uh, and is now looking to uh, to get up to date okay uh so it depends where what depends what your motivation is uh, for the question if it's certification based then i would say that you need to take a good look at the series guides um and uh, familiarize yourself with what they're for 
Uh, so if you so um, if you're looking at transitioning from certification from 9.2 to 10th edition, the ex, the addition the inclusion of series guides in the standard has obvious ramifications for stuff that you might need to know. So if that's your motivation, if your motivation is well, what's useful, I'm still going to point you largely at the series guides. I'm going and what I'm going to say is um, consider the context in which you're operating in, and if you are in need of um, uh, guidance on using TOGAF in an agile context, if you're looking at a digital transformation or post-digital transformation world, and you're looking at the fundamental role of architecture, uh, or, or you know, or, or what's it, another good one to headline would be if you are in the business of building and maintaining an architecture practice in an organisation, the series guides are going to give you um, road-tested guidance um, from from uh, for, from experienced practitioners uh, that should help you in the course of doing that. Um, like I said during the uh, during the piece, tenth edition is uh, in terms of its fun the fundamental content a, a quite a deliberate evolution from nine point two. The material in nine point two uh, is good and it's proven. What we've done is work hard to improve the clarity uh, and understand, you know, make it easier for people to understand. Uh, we're not looking at tearing all of that up to to replace it with a whole bunch of new content. Uh, but the the expansion of the standard to include the series guides is significant. Great, Mark. We'll we'll leave it there. I appreciate you uh, um, sharing your knowledge of uh, the Togo Standard Tenth Edition today and uh, answering those questions. There will obviously be more coming from the open group uh, around the standard and around the uh, uh, the obviously interesting topic of certification um, in the coming months. But for now, Mark Dixon, thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, so just before we go, um, uh, this is a, a, obviously a, a topic of interest as we as we knew it would be, and we've had many many people joining us today, and uh, even more registered who will watch it probably in the convenience of their own time zone. But for those of you who um, who feel able to uh, get to the Washington DC area in, uh, in next month, uh, we're actually having a TOGAF user group meeting as part of the Open Group quarterly event in, in DC. Um, and that is uh, on Tuesday, also a Tuesday, July the 26th. So think about that if that's uh, even a vague possibility for you. There's more information on our, on our website. And we will get to um, cover some, uh, obviously, some uh, uh, more detail around uh, the new standards and the new version of the standard and other related um, TOGAF um, issues. Because it, it's getting the user group is, is great. It's where it's another vehicle for us at the Open Group to to hear what what works for people who are actually using it for real in their day jobs and uh, what what needs looking at more and. Uh, you know, we, we usually we usually get some really valuable information and I think um, the audience goes away. So do think about that if you're in the area uh, or could be on uh, Tuesday, July 26th. Um, lastly for today, um, we will gather again for Toolkit Tuesday in two weeks as usual, where the topic will be the Open Group Digital Portfolio of Standards. So um, that is something that is highly relevant to TOGAF. TOGAF plays uh, a significant part with that, but it's also about uh, bringing our um, portfolio of standards like OAA, like Archimate, like the IT for IT reference our architecture and the DP bot, bringing them together in, in a way that is um, more easily usable and um, using them together in practice rather than um, using each one uh, separately along the way. So. Look out for uh, more information on on, uh, on that between now and then, and hope to see you in two weeks. In the meantime, thank you all for your time today and your questions and enthusiasm. And yeah, we had uh, a great list of countries today. Uh, always, always great to see. So take care and uh, be safe wherever you are and um, see you in two weeks, I hope. Bye for now.